Emma, thank you so much for meeting with me today. You are the astrophysicist who we selected would be a great fit to answer our community questions on gravitational waves. You study this stuff, it's your day job. Who better than you to really reveal to our community what the truth is about gravity waves? So, the first question is, what are they? What are gravity waves? Okay, well, thank you for having me, Jamal. Um, so, to understand what gravitational waves are, I'd just like to take the story back a bit, um, just to see what gravity is itself. So, um, we taught at school about Newton's concept of gravity, and he said that objects that have mass, such as the sun and the earth, are gravitationally attracted towards each other, depending on the distance between them. So the closer they are, the stronger the attraction. Mm. And this theory was fantastic. And then a few hundred years later, Einstein came along and he said, well, actually, I think that space-time is in fact curved. And what we call an experience as gravity is this curvature within space-time. So mass, objects with mass actually bend space. Um, so the sun will deform it with a curve and the earth. But nothing in our universe ever stays still. The earth orbits around the sun. And what happens is these deformations that's created by the mass objects, as they move around, they overlap and they cause these ripples to permeate outwards. And, um, and, and so just like how a drop of water in the pond will cause ripples to form and radiate outwards, that's exactly what happens, but it's those ripples that we call gravitational waves. Mm. Ripples in space-time. Exactly. <laughs> objects with mass circling around each other. Okay, so how did scientists figure all this out? Okay, so that's a really good question and I'm glad you asked. So with Einstein's new idea of what gravity was, he formulated his theory of general relativity. And as he was formulating it and investigating the maths of all of this, he actually saw that these things, that the waves would fall out. So these were gravitational waves that kind of fell out of the maths mm. as he was looking into it. Okay, so so the mathematicians had their ideas, and they and they and they and they they realised that all these objects with mass and interacting with gravity wouldn't wouldn't uh, be able to happen without these gravity waves. But have you ever observed these? Have you ever been able to see them uh, in nature beyond the maths? Uh, that's an interesting question. So the the first example that gravitational waves actually existed mm. came in the 60s and this actually in, quite interestingly put to bed a lot of contradictions within the scientific community so the first 50 years of general relativity people didn't necessarily believe gravitational waves existed they saw it come out from the maths but they thought that was because of the type of maths being used mm. and it wasn't a physical phenomenon uh, but in the late 60s, early 70s, these two pulsars, a uh, binary pulsar system called the Hulse-Taylor binary pulsars, mm. um, were observed. And a pulsar is a type of dead star, star called a neutron star. And uh, they emit these powerful jets of electromagnetic radiation or light. And uh, they're like lighthouses in the sky because these beams just fly around. So we could see them, and what they were doing was they were spiraling round each other. Mm. And if general relativity was correct and gravitational waves existed, mm. then these two pulsars should be orbiting closer and closer to each other and spiraling inwards because they lose energy as gravitational waves. Wow. And um, so they saw them and started to observe them, and mm. incredibly, uh, there's a graph where it shows the prediction and the line they actually took, and it matches up exactly. Oh, that must have been a good day for the scientists. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's amazing. And um, I could see how these things um, really, uh, you're observing this activity on a grand scale uh, beyond things we see on Earth uh, in astrophysics. But although that's really cool, I think the natural question from here, as Matt asked, is, 
why should I care if I'm not an astrophysicist? <laughs> and that's a good question. Uh, and it's one that comes up a lot. So there's two answers I could give you. The first answer is traditionally what physicists and quite possibly other scientists say, and uh, that is that it helps technological advancement by exploration. This is how we discovered MRI scanners in medical uses and GPS with space travel and so on. But I find that quite unsatisfactory. I think it's skirting a bit around it. Mm. Um, and the reason that people give that answer is because the truth is you don't need to care. Um, but that's not to say that you shouldn't care. So, for example, humans, when all throughout history, being absolutely fine until the 1800s when the electromagnetic spectrum was discovered, and life carried on and it was perfectly fine. But once we discovered electromagnetic spectrum, we discovered electricity, mm. and then you can only see how humans have been able to evolve with their environment in the last 200 years and the difference that has made. So although gravitational waves don't necessarily directly affect you, that's not to say that they are going to be important. Wow, I see, yeah. It's, it, no one is able to predict these things, and by studying the world, we might find things that we've never considered could even exist. Exactly. But, but, you know, what is the future of gravitational wave research? What does it mean for the future of science, as asked by Tom in our community? Uh, another brilliant question, and I am biased because this is my <laughs> field that I love, and uh, I think the best way that I can explain what it is like is going back to Newton's idea of gravity and it being the attractive force between two or more objects that have mass. Well, Einstein said his famous equation E equals mc squared. And what that equation tells us is that energy and mass are equal. They're exactly the same. So gravity doesn't act between mass, it acts between energy. And for anything to exist in our universe, it has to have energy. So that means gravity acts, interacts with everything in our universe. Mm. So for the first time, we will be able to see dark matter. And the proof is in the pudding with the first detection, which is of black holes. And this could actually be considered direct observation of black holes. So who knows what's lurking in the wow. universe? Yeah, wow. waiting to be discovered. <laughs> so gravitational waves and the research on this mysterious force around us all the time could illuminate the whole world like a super powerful telescope? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, I'm very excited to see what you astrophysicists come up to in a few years <laughs> and I'll be knocking on your door with some more questions then. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you so much, Emma. Cheers. Thank you very much, Jamal. Thank you. <laughs> that was good. I feel like the yeah. first one was better. I know. You can't no. think that way. You can't think that You're way. Right. You need to erase the first one out of your memory. Yeah. <laughs> there were things that